Good evening, everyone. I am coming to you from my living room, as I'm sure many of us will be conversing now at this point for many reasons. Um, I'm coming to you tonight to share my testimony as I had planned to do um, with you in person this evening. I hope that you joined us last week for the first week of the parish mission, and I'm not sure if it moved you the way that it moved me, but the two videos, um, I very much related to. Um, I took them as videos of a life being shattered, um, a life crashing down, um, false lives, and um, lives built around um, false hopes, and then lives from that shattering being filled with hurt and fear and vulnerability and rebuilding. Um, and I found such a commonality with those stories and with my own. And I know tonight is about um, healing and rescue. And my story also um, really comes to that too. So it kind of is a link, I feel like, between the two nights. Um, I always say bet before I start my testimony that this really isn't my story. It's God's story. Um, it truly is. A testimony because it is a test that has turned into a testimony I believe um, you see on on a January 6th of 2015 it was just a normal night like any other night um, I was actually taking my then um, four-year-old to his first swim class at the Y and it was a blizzard and my husband got stuck at work at the fire department, of course. And so I had to pack up all these bags <clears throat> by myself and take them to the outdoor or to the Y down the street. And um, he got there, he met me there. And um, I said, okay, well, why don't you take the baby home and um, I'll stay with Jack and um, get him changed and everything. You go home, stop at the store and give the baby a bath and then I'll meet you there. So I got home and the baby was still in the carrier. And I always find it amazing how much women can get done than men. Um, and so I gave James a bath and uh, got him ready for bed and um, put him down. And Brian and I watched some TV and went to bed. And about 4 a.m. I woke up to feed him um, and he had passed away and um, we called the same fire department that my husband had just gotten off work from and the same shift of guys that he had just worked with came to our home and tried to revive him um, and couldn't. And it was then that our lives came crashing down and it was then that my life was shattered. Um, my life as I knew it and I could relate to the girl with the job and I could relate to the girl with, as the model because before that night, I was only concerned with the next family photo shoot or the next party we were gonna throw at our house or um, the next clothes at work that I was gonna have. Um, and all that time thinking that every good and perfect thing came from me and not from God above. And I was very wrong. Um, and so I was back at work about a month later and I just didn't know where to begin and what to do, but I knew one thing, I had become obsessed with God and I wanted to know him and I wanted to know everything about him. I just wanted to know the person that now had my son and I didn't know where to start. Um, and a girl that I had gone to high school with and I hadn't seen in over a decade reached out to me randomly um, and said, hey, I know I haven't seen you in a while, but I have this Bible study starting at my church and it's called Red Sea Rules. And I'd like to see if you wanna come and it starts tomorrow night. And so I said, yes. And I went home and I told my husband and he thought I was crazy because I was going to a church, people I didn't know, 50 some women, um, but I went. 
and it was there that my journey started. And I was given a Bible um, by a group of women and um, I began reading that Bible and I had what I called a Bible guide. Uh, her name was Barbie, still a dear friend of mine. And I would call her and ask her, what am I reading? Is this right? I don't understand. Um, and, uh, and from there, I've taken many Bible studies. I've been hosts at uh, retreats. Um, and God has just filled our life and our home and our family with such a different love. It's something that I, I wrote down the other night that from a, a life that came crashing down, um, the love that we have now is authentic and strong and everlasting. And it's continuous and growing and it's unconditional. Um, and and I, I wouldn't, as much as I want James with us every single day and I wish he was here, I wouldn't change that love or that life that I have now with Jesus. Um, when Father Fred spoke last week, he talked about welcoming, him, welcoming us home. And I really was drawn to this study, um, the 99, uh, because I think I felt like that note, that one that God chased down and I wish not the way, but I feel like that one that was chased down. And in some way, I think every day one of us is that one at some point. Um, and St. Gabe's has done some amazing things in the past year or so to support its community um, with Alpha. I wish that that had been around when James passed because it would have been an amazing place to start. Um, and formed, I love formed. Um, I listen to it when I'm feeling down. I research on there when I'm feeling great. It's, it's just a great resource to have. Um, and there's so many other things that that we have now as a community and and I welcome all of you to embrace those things together um, and that we can all come together, each one of us as that one. Um, and maybe we can make up the 99 and help the next one that walks through the door. So thank you. Hope you have a good evening and hopefully I'll see you all soon.